you think of when you think of the word mutation? Do you think about X-Men and some really awesome ability? Or the Ninja Turtles? We loved the Ninja Turtles when we were little. We might be showing our age a little bit. But mutations really are not that glamorous. Most people understand that a mutation is some kind of change. It is a change of genetic material, and more specifically, a nucleic acid. RNA and DNA, they're both types of nucleic acids. So how does a change happen? Remember that in DNA, the base adenine, A, goes with the base thymine, T. And the base cytosine, C, goes with the base guanine, G. And that's all good, but what happens if the wrong base matches up? Many things can cause an error like that. There can be external factors, like chemicals and radiation. Internal things, too, like something goes wrong during DNA replication, during interphase. Interphase is a stage that prepares cells to divide during mitosis. And now while these things can increase the chance that a mutation is going to happen, it's important to understand that mutations, they're random. If a mutation is going to be a helpful thing for an organism, which is rare, very few mutations are actually helpful, it can't just will itself to get that mutation. An organism can't just will itself to get this. It's definitely not like X-Men either. And more about that when we get to natural selection. Many mutations are actually neutral in their effect, meaning they neither help nor harm an organism. And some mutations are harmful. So we're going to talk about the different kinds of mutations. First, we're going to talk about gene mutations. So DNA makes up genes, and genes code for proteins that influence or make up different traits. So when DNA has changes, otherwise known as a mutation, then different proteins can be produced, and this can affect an organism's traits. So let's look at the gene mutations. So first, substitution. That means you have the wrong base matched. So instead of A with T, you could put A with G, scandalous. You can have insertion, that means an extra base is added in. You can have deletion, that means a base is removed. Insertions and deletions have the potential to be especially dangerous. Because remember, in protein synthesis, we talked about how bases are read in threes. Well, if you add a base or remove a base, suddenly the number of bases total has changed, right? So if you read in threes, depending on where it happened, everything that's read afterwards has the potential to get really messed up. We call this a frame shift. Now, these were all types of gene mutations, but we also have something called chromosome mutations. Remember that chromosomes are made up of DNA and protein. They're highly organized, and they have a lot of genes on them. So all of the body cells in your body have 46 chromosomes. Human sperm and egg cells have 23 chromosomes. Well, changes can occur at that large chromosome scale, too. So let's talk about these chromosome mutations. Just like insertion in a gene mutation, where bases got added, you can also have something called duplication in chromosomes. These are mutations where extra copies of genes are generated, so extra copies of that chromosome are generated. There's deletion. That's where some of the genetic material from the chromosome breaks off. Inversion, that's when a broken chromosome segment gets inversed. That means it gets reversed and put back on the chromosome. Or translocation, we were not kidding back when we said there's a lot of trans words in biology. That's when a fragment from one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another chromosome. There's more mutations than what we just covered, but the idea here is there are many kinds of different changes that can happen. If a mutation is going to happen, there's also some vulnerable times, like when DNA replication happens during interphase, and also other times too, like meiosis. Remember, in humans, meiosis produces sperm and egg cells that have 23 chromosomes. But sometimes those chromosomes, when they're separating, they don't separate completely. We call this non-disjunction. This results in an egg or sperm that has too many or too few chromosomes, and that can cause a genetic disorder depending on which chromosome we're talking about. Different chromosomes contain different genes, so the specific chromosome that's affected, that really does make a difference in the result. And let's talk about some real life examples now of mutations. Remember, we said that a lot of times mutations can have a neutral effect. 
Not all of your DNA codes for a direct protein. And other genes in your body can even influence whether those genes are going to be turned on or turned off. Let's talk about sickle cell anemia. First, a little background. Hemoglobin is a protein in your red blood cells that helps you carry oxygen. Well, in the disorder sickle cell anemia, the gene that codes for hemoglobin is mutated. And if you inherit two copies of this mutated gene, one from each parent, you can have this disorder. And the disorder makes it very difficult for your red blood cells to carry oxygen because the shape of the red blood cell, it's affected from this mutated hemoglobin protein. And this can lead to anemia and other problems. But get this, let's say you just inherit one copy of the mutated gene from one parent. You're gonna be considered a carrier, but you don't really officially have the disease and usually you don't even have symptoms. But what's interesting is carriers appear to have a protective factor against malaria. Malaria is a disease caused by a protist that can be transmitted by mosquitoes. These individuals, they can still get malaria, but usually their symptoms are less severe. So in a way, this one copy of a mutation can be an advantage if you happen to live in an area where malaria is really present. Studying mutations and genetic disorders is a huge field right now. If this kind of thing interests you, there are a lot of careers to look into. In fact, there's a career known as a genetic counselor. They work to help families that may be at risk or affected by genetic disorders. They do a lot of good in the world. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. Thank <laughs> you.